student protests closed Johannesburg's University of Witwatersrand two weeks ago. It was supposed to reopen on Tuesday, but a group of about 500 students were not going to let that happen. There is no way in which vets will operate. So the police moved in. They fired rubber bullets, tear gas and stun grenades at the protesting students. These students say they want free university education to help close South Africa's inequality gap, which is still largely divided along colour lines. They're angry at how President Jacob Zuma treated them at a meeting on Monday. When we arrived, President read out a press statement. That was basically it. And he left. He didn't even hear the voice of students. We don't take to the streets for fun. We don't take to the streets as a first means. It is because we are not taken seriously in those meetings. Historically, the governing African National Congress has promised free education, free houses and free health care. It's won the party votes in the past, but has not been delivered. But the government says it will cover next year's fee increase for the majority of students. The university's chancellor says he too is committed to the students' cause, but not at any cost. Many of us actually warned about this very crisis, and that's the dilemma we're in. So, yes, again, to the cause is a legitimate one. No to losing the 2016 academic year. This university is at the heart of the Fees Must Fall movement, which has seen about 16 universities across the country disrupted. The student protests cut to the core of the inequality debate in South Africa. Poor students can get a government loan to cover their fees, but when they get a job, they have to support family members. So they say that's a double burden of repaying loans and trying to lift their loved ones out of poverty. It's something these students call a black tax. The student movement may be weaker than it was last year, but it's forcing a debate in South Africa over whether higher education is a right and who should pay for it. Tanya Page, Al Jazeera, Johannesburg.